additional atlas passive trees and hello to a single gigantic atlas passive tree. Ah, good old Path of Exile. <laughs> this new tree has over 600 passives available to choose from and you can earn 117. You know it's starting. Shh. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Thanks for joining us today as we reveal Path of Exile's next expansion, Sentinel, which launches on PC and Mac on May 13th and on Xbox and PlayStation on May 18th. Okay. Here we Twitch go. drops are enabled for today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below to link your account and earn your Rapture Wings. Link it, boys. In February, we launched Siege of the Atlas, an expansion that drastically changed Path of Exile's mapping endgame. It removed Atlas regions and watchstones and introduced the gigantic Atlas-wide passive tree and four new pinnacle bosses to challenge. One other very important aspect of the new endgame is its modularity. We designed it in a way where it's easy to expand with more content, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay. Alongside the Sentinel Challenge League, this expansion doubles down on the best parts of Siege of the Atlas to give you ultimate control over your endgame experience. Here's what you can expect from today's live stream. We'll start with a trailer for the Sentinel expansion, and then we'll go through its content and features in detail. For starting for this? with how He's the Sentinel fresh. Challenge League lets you control your level of risk and reward. Oh, so it's we'll like ultimate thing. the improvements we have made to Path of Exile's endgame. Cool. We'll discuss modifications to the Atlas-wide passive tree, the introduction of 20 Atlas Keystone passives, Game balance. new variations on pinnacle boss fights, 20 new and keystones. powerful unique items designed by the winners of our Siege of the Atlas boss kill event. We're gonna see the big uniques, dude. Following the that, one made we'll from, discuss uh, the type of balance changes we're shit. making, or more interestingly, not making in this expansion. We'll then cover what we're doing with magic and rare monster modifiers, various quality oh, of life improvements, and the full be big. release of controller support for PC players. After showing you our latest supporter packs, I'll head into a live Q&A with community streamer Ziggy D, where we'll answer your questions. Once that finishes, we'll post the expansion's full pack. <laughs> Do you think notes. HH is going to be dead, dude? There's a lot to cover, so let's, let's roll see. the trailer for Sentinel. Roll it. Roll it, Chris. In the wake of your power, something has arisen. Oh, that's good timing. Hello? Yeah. <laughs> For these cruel constructs can be harnessed. <laughs> Excuse me? Take them. <laughs> Test and tinker. Combine and reconfigure. And together, you will find your fortune. Some sentinels are powerful. Others are dangerous. So they're adding modifiers to monsters. Stars. Monstrous new threats. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, dude, come Value on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uber pinnacles. Your command. That was a lot of balls, yeah. So basically, what I'm what I'm gathering from this is that it's like Legion rewards, but throughout the whole map is what I just saw. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so let's get started with a full explanation of the upcoming Sentinel Challenge League. Okay, cool. Sentinels are ancient constructs that have been unearthed across Rayclast. In this league, you will collect these Sentinels and attempt to harness their great power. But this symbiosis is not without risks. Once deployed, a sentinel follows you, watching and waiting for you to enter combat. As you encounter enemies, the sentinel will fire them. a beam that doesn't damage the enemy, but rather empowers them. Yes. This not only amplifies the difficulty of the foe, but also the rewards that it yields. There are three classes of sentinels that you will find hmm. as you kill monsters in this league. How fast did it do that, though? It Stalker better be instant, man. Will follow you for around 30 seconds. That doesn't look very instant. Dozens of monsters before they dissipate. This is like a build your own breach or delirium effect, because you control what monsters you're fighting when you deploy the sentinel, and through various means that we'll describe shortly, you're also in control of how much the monsters are empowered. Okay. 
I mean, it's only a specific amount of monsters, right? So pandemonium sentinels are designed for mass area of effect. That's cool. Typically, only fire one shot, but this shot really counts. Oh, monsters to affect an entire screen full of foes at once. And you can tell it when to shoot. I guess can be very dangerous because it empowers so many enemies at one time. The final class, Apex Sentinels, can only empower rare or unique enemies. They fire fewer shots, but have a much larger impact on difficulty and reward. Oh, this is the Beyond one. You start with a single slot to equip a Stalker Sentinel. That's the Beyond as one. as you play through the league, you can eventually unlock two more Sentinel slots, so that you can have one Sentinel of each class equipped at a time. Each class of Sentinel can be deployed only once per area that you play. You'll quickly develop various strategies for when each class of Sentinel is best used. For example, saving your Pandemonium Sentinel for when you're surrounded by monsters, or using your Apex Sentinel on the map boss or league content that spawns several rare monsters. Oh boy. With a full loadout of Sentinels equipped, in every map you'll get to empower bosses of your choice, choose up an entire screen at once with a button press, and choose the part of the map for its I like best how to Chris is embracing the word juice. Monsters. Sentinels cannot be damaged by monsters in combat, but do gradually deplete their internal power supply each time you use them. They can be found as you play and are incompatible with traditional ray classy and crafting techniques. However, new sentinels with different properties can be assembled from the depleted husks of others that you have used until their internal power supplies ran out. We'll explain that okay. crafting process in more detail later on. You can find magic sentinels that have mods on them. These mods can uh, augment the base properties of a sentinel, extending its duration, making it empower monsters faster, increasing the number it can empower, or even the degree to which the monsters are empowered, affecting both their difficulty and rewards. Mm. Some mods will add specific <laughs> drops, such as currency items, essences, or unique items, to monsters empowered by the sentinel, but at the cost of increasing oh, okay. how difficult the monster is to defeat. That's kind of insane. You can also occasionally find rare sentinels that have more than two mods on them. These are generally quite a lot more powerful than normal or magic sentinels, if you find the right combination of These mods. These are going to drop very commonly, by the way. The sentinels you find 100%. as you explore ray class will become more powerful. Some particularly powerful ones with special properties can only come from the process of assembling new sentinels from And you'll be able to filter them 100%, right? While the sentinels you find generally get better and better as you play through the league, you can also upgrade the behavior and properties of sentinels through your sentinel controller. It's an interesting little tree. Sentinel controller is like a runic circuit board. It's what powers your sentinels and allows you to customize them. There are specific nodes for each of the three types of Sentinel, so you can customize the properties and behavior of all of them. I'm guessing you'll be able to get everything at the end, right? Types. He doesn't say you anything about the that. League and kill more and more oh, enemies affected by your Sentinels, your controller will gain power. You start with four units, which is enough to power your first Sentinel slot and your first Runic node. By the end game, you are able to work up to 30 power units. Oh, it's only 30. Almost half of the controller to be powered at once. Come. So, how do you choose which runic nodes to power? You do this by connecting them together with filaments. Power flows from the top of the circuit through the filaments until it is all in use by the nodes you have connected. You can set up filaments in advance and they'll automatically be used as more power becomes available. Come. Moving filaments oh, around Oh, no I see. Cost. So, you, basically you can like make your tree first. It gradually gets activated as you gain more power throughout the league. Can we get that so on, the atlas, uh, on the Atlas? On the passive tree and Atlas passive tree too? Some powerful runic nodes require two filaments and hence allocate more Please? of your power when activated. Additional sentinel slots for other types like pandemonium and apex sentinels, for example. I mean, the tech is obviously three there. Filaments, and hence three power units each. While it's almost <laughs> always best to have all three slots powered so you can use all three sentinels per area. Yeah, I imagine it's the leveling. Where you want to unpower like specific start. sentinel slots Let's make a and then have before. more power for additional runic nodes. Import it. Also that you can fully specialize in just one or two sentinel types. Just to reiterate, you can change your allocation as much as you like, so feel free to experiment. This powerful runic node allows pandemonium sentinels to be used an additional time each area. While I don't know how excited I can get upside, over this. You should definitely plan around the fact that you'll be running their charge down pretty quickly if you use this node. Until I like get to this see what they're actually like, do you know what I mean? Sentinels from empowering normal rarity enemies. While this seems very powerful at first, because you'll just be empowering magic, rare, or unique enemies that benefit greatly from the boost of item drops, you should be aware that unless you have a large source of special enemies, you'll be fighting against the flight duration of your sentinels, and will probably want to build around increasing their duration. Oh yeah. 
While the Sentinel controller lets you specialize how the different classes of Sentinels behave, it's generally not necessary to have to modify it for each new Sentinel that you equip. The runic nodes you have chosen represent your overall strategy for each class of Sentinel and rarely need to be tweaked if you swap one Sentinel for another. As That's you use reassuring, Sentinels but... Across a number of maps, they eventually run out of charge and will become depleted, but they don't need to be thrown away when this occurs. You can find power cores that oh. let you assemble a new Sentinel with okay, a full good. charge. This process disassembles two existing Sentinels and creates a hybrid of the two, with their properties combined together. Uh, Right-clicking a power core opens up an assembly screen. Excuse me? If you insert two sentinels and click the assemble button, a new fully charged one will be created. Can only empower rare unique enemies. Duration? Second duration? Reduced empowerment. This process is a complex and okay. unpredictable one that can either inherit Show some good from shit. input sentinels or potentially produce new ones that weren't based on either of them. For example, the base type of the sentinel could either be the left input sentinel, the right input sentinel, or an entirely new one that can't spawn naturally and can only come from this process. Character gains, ta character gains tailwind for 10 the seconds on a deployment. Modifiers. You generally get a mix of modifiers from the two input okay. sentinels, but sometimes they have their tiers upgraded or entirely new mods added, occasionally including ones that are exclusive to the assembly process. The end result is that you're usually getting sentinels that are similar in function to the depleted ones you have combined. Unique reward, new chance for rewards to be doubled. results that unlock more power and possibilities. That's a pretty good one. The best sentinels in the game will come from lucky combinations of depleted sentinels that have just the right mods. It's also possible to assemble two sentinels directly into one of the many valuable unique sentinels. Oh shit. Map quality affects number of rewards empowered by enemies? Empowered monsters? I can read it. Exist, we'll see you later. The assembly process to greatly increase the chances of various interesting outcomes occurring. They don't guarantee anything, uh, but absolutely worth considering if you're trying to hit unlikely assembly results. Okay. You may want to accumulate a small collection of depleted sentinels so that you have options to assemble together. Oh no. That's where the sentinel locker comes in. It's a Thanks. free object that Fuck. you can place in your hideout that allows you to store I was just about each to of the say. sentinel currency items as well as a tab full of each of the three categories of sentinel. You can also store sentinels Affinity in the stash tabs and they can be freely traded with other players. The sentinel Good. locker's affinity for sentinels will also work with regular stash tabs while this league is active. As I hinted at before, you can find or create oh, if I slow for time. These have powerful Shut static up. properties, but because what is that reward type? The sentinels, there's no way to recharge them once they become deployed. I don't know what that reward type They're was. Essentially limited use items with powerful effects. Let's look at a few examples. Ivory Stalker Sentinel. First off, okay. the Basilisk. This is a pandemonium sentinel. Petrified empowered enemies for five seconds. Effect blast with a petrification effect. Any monsters caught in the blast are turned to stone. Rather than being primarily useful for raising the risk and reward of combat oh, like come other on. sentinels, this one is incredibly useful as an emergency button in combat. By activating the Basilisk, you can freeze most of the monsters around you in place, letting you take control of dangerous situations. <laughs> Bro. This unique sentinel, the Hollow-Eyed Skull, is basically a headhunter in sentinel form. Okay. When the character kills an empowered or rare monster, they gain its modifiers for 20 seconds. Unique sentinels that are designed to empower specific cool. named Atlas that's, map that's bosses. That's good. If you activate one of these sentinels while fighting that boss, it empowers the boss into an extremely dangerous version that is very, very rewarding. 16 currency rewards. The highly empowered boss fight cool. is further scaled by whatever this mods is gonna be you so want rare. to contain it. So you'll want to be pretty careful with what mods you choose to use. All of the on mods. The other hand, rewards are scaled by reward bonuses on that map. So if you're able to defeat one of these bosses in a juice map, explosion. you will certainly be greatly rewarded. These highly empowered map bosses are the best source of recombinators, a new type of endgame currency item that can be found in the Sentinel League. Recombinators oh, are the only to destroys two armors to create to two pieces of equipment of the same item class. Holy shit! Okay. Them together in unpredictable ways. Oh, yeah, that's this good. This can also rarely imbue your items with exclusive modifiers that don't normally spawn oh, that type of item. Okay, While that's really big. The recombination process involves significant risks. You could combine the best parts of two rare items okay, together, this is huge. maybe getting a lucky exclusive mod spawn, and end up with one of the best weapons, armor pieces, or jewelry in Path of Exile. Great. Good stuff. Sentinels can be deployed while engaging in other Happy league content. Happy to see content. that. Oh, so of course you showed Delhi. reward to quite crazy levels. For example, this guy doesn't know how Delhi works. Delirium, trigger a breach and deploy your sentinel. You walked into the bridge too early. The There's no fog. Modifiers to both their difficulty and rewards. 
there are only a few specific areas that Sentinels can't be deployed in, mostly for technical reasons. And those are unique maps, pinnacle atlas bosses, and the semi <laughs> So that's Sentinel in a nutshell. It's a combat league that gives you heaps of control over the exact risk very, of the yeah. you encounter. It stacks with other combat enhancing league mechanics, juices your end game bosses beyond any kind I mean, of reasonable that's really difficulty, cool. lets you play with temporary headhunters, and might even let a few players assemble some pretty insane rare items if they're lucky. We the assembling one is insane. After you've had a chance to play with it next week. In addition to the Sentinel Challenge League, this expansion further improves on the new endgame introduced go. in Siege of the Atlas, its Atlas-wide passive tree and pinnacle boss fights. The new endgame was designed to give you ultimate control over what kind of content you want to play control. and how difficult and rewarding you want it to be. With the Sentinel expansion, we are doubling down on what makes this new endgame the best one the Path of Exile has ever had. They know it. This expansion introduces 20 powerful keystone passives to the Atlas tree. As you know from the regular nice. passive skill tree, keystone passives keystones. are usually dramatic and build changing, with both upsides they, we didn't and have potential keystones. downsides. Each keystone can completely change the way you play Path of Exile's endgame. Oh, game. that's fucking sick. keystone passives from many different playstyles. There's an Eldritch Currency one, there's an Elder one. The second big change is that we have introduced these clusters of passives that grant you even more control over what the content you encounter. As you know, oh, that's you can sick. encounter many different types that's of so content randomly within maps. These new passives I like allow that you to prevent content you don't enjoy from appearing randomly or simultaneously causing other content to spawn really at cool. a higher rate. Aside from the obvious convenience of only encountering the past league mechanics that you choose, and this is right the at the start, is great for we passed through that specific content that you have juiced on your atlas. That's pretty good. Thirdly, we have created incredibly difficult and rewarding uber versions of seven pinnacle boss fights, which can be accessed via six new keystone passives. Okay. These fights are designed to challenge the absolute best Path of Exile players, uber. and suffice to say, they are brutally difficult. Uber serious this year, finally. And boss fights. There's like storms the in the middle. Focus I don't know if you noticed. Significantly more likely that your favored maps will drop. If a map drops that is not one of your favored maps, it will be converted into a random currency item. This means Interesting. That you will exclusively see your favorite maps, and outside of that, more currency. Nice. This is the realization of the "I only want to play one map" dream that some players have. It also helps they players who are sustaining maps and would rather just get extra currency items. Thank you. The stream of consciousness keystone prevents you from modifying your maps with fragments or scarabs. That means that when extra content is being rolled for your maps, each of the base chances is fifty percent higher. This is really useful for players who don't want to have to think about juicing their maps and would instead prefer to get a constant moderate bonus instead. That's very good as well. Very nice. The following two keystones are for very advanced players who have completed their atlas trees and want to get a very specific It's like if you don't want to put scarabs, you get a lot more backs. The wandering path keystone increases the effect of small passives on your atlas skill tree and oh disables all notable my. passives. Oh my god. The Grand Design Keystone top increases hat, the monster dude. pack size in each of your maps <laughs> enough, proportional to the number the of notable hat. passives you have allocated. However, the trade-off is that small passives have no effect. 15% beyond. Uh, I think the I think the These two keystones are very good for specializing into maximizing pack size and quantity at the expense of specific league content, which is great for general magic fine builds or divination card farmers. True. The twist aware. Of fate keystone changes Actually the behavior aware. of corrupted rare maps in unpredictable ways. Upon entering a map, you may be sent to an alternative map of the same tier with randomized modifiers. Oh hell no! <laughs> All of the master missions, scarabs, and kirit crafts applied to the map will also be randomized. Hell. <laughs> this process will not pick an outcome that was already on the map, so it always shifts it to a new property that you didn't have nah, before. Nah. This means that you can play all of the well, scarabs, master missions, and maps that you enjoy, and any leftover ones can be randomized to new outcomes, which are guaranteed to not be the ones you started with. This I mean, I see the point, but no, no thanks. As well, with players feeding bad scarabs or maps into the Twist of Fate lottery. That's a cool portal. The Wellspring of Creation and Dance of Destruction keystones change the ratios of monster life and damage in maps on Interesting. the Atlas, so that they are more dangerous and less tanky, or vice versa. These two keystones are designed to be remedial, allowing players with an abundance of offense or defense to normalize cool. themselves so that they can handle the content better. Interesting. If you find yourself in a situation where you're waiting for a weapon upgrade or can't fix your resistances, then you could allocate one of these keystones to temporarily make things easier before unallocating it later when your build is complete. Yeah, that's clever. I like that. That's smart. Six new keystones create uber versions of Path of That's really smart, honestly. Boss fights. 
Benarius, Cyrus, the Maven, the Searing Exarch, the Eater of Worlds, and the Shaper and Uber Elder, who I guess is now called the Uber Uber Elder? Uber Uber, actually. Like one of these keystones on your Atlas passive tree ramps up the corresponding boss fights so that it is extremely difficult. Like, really actual hard, Uber harder Uber. Than saying goodbye to Zana hard. Only allocate these keystones if your character is extremely powerful and you know you can handle the challenge. Okay. In general, the encounter's rules are modified to be far more punitive and difficult. <laughs> In return, though, you can mm. earn some very enticing rewards. Each of the Uber fights has an additional high chance reward and a chance of getting a very, very rare chase very reward. Very nice. For example, the Uber Maven guarantees an elevated sextant if you're able to complete the encounter. Very rarely, though, you may be able to earn an awakened exceptional support gem as well, such as Empower, Enlighten, or Enhance. No. These keystones unlock crazy battles that will challenge our most <laughs> aspiring players who are deep in Path of Exile's endgame. They have a new level of difficulty That's for That's the who new want to push their mandatory gem time now, before. dude. Oh my god. The keystones we have shown you so far are designed around many different types of endgame players. Maybe like 50x. Some class cannon players struggle with defenses but have no problem with offense. Some players want to just play one map. Oh my Some god. Some players want the difficulty to be ramped up and Two to receive the at level six. with this added challenge. The keystones also let you identify a specific reward, type of content, or playstyle, and know exactly how you can get the most out of it. Interesting. There are a number of other new keystones that we'll reveal before release. Like the ones we have shown you today, these keystones require you to consider your endgame plan in an entirely new light. We're very interested to see what strategies you will use to try to conquer the new Uber Pinnacle. I mean, this is all good stuff, man. Before we get into the new unique items, Ooh. there are a few other endgame atlas changes. I would love to see the, the maps that I like back. We're removing Vinktas Square and Doyani's Machinarium from the Atlas of Worlds because they are not okay. natural map drops. You yeah. can still get and play these maps, of course, but they aren't counted for your overall atlas completion anymore. That's good. Their atlas passive points have been moved. What is that on the right? The Infinite Hunger and the Black Star. Oh, what? We have rebalanced influence altars and maps. They now feel a lot different than they did in the form they were introduced Wait, in Siege up. of the Atlas. Hold up. This Their might not be a good thing. They now feel more impactful and they have more diversity of rewards, including new rewards. The intention is to fulfill the original design goal of having an ultimatum-like choice about whether you want to accept additional mm, challenge for additional challenges. We've added better Atlas tree support for them, including two keystones that can affect them. Elder Jigger, okay. We've also rebalanced the drop weightings of the new Pinnacle Atlas bosses changing the relative drop weightings of their unique rewards and making them more likely to drop Eldritch currency. Okay, so they did nerf Apparently, the drop rate of the unique. Elder and Shaper Scarabs are basically worthless because their influence is worse Do they than stack the now? you can get from the Eater of Worlds. Do and they the stack? Exile. In Sentinel, you can now apply multiple types of influence to one map. <laughs> so you could have Eater of Worlds influence alongside a Shaper or Elder Scarab on a Conqueror Oh map. my god. Together, these three influences combined have a very large effect on that map. And this will make Elder and Shaper Scarab significantly oh more desirable. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> the start point of encountering Shaper, Elder, or Conqueror influence and influence items has been There's raised in no level way. 81 areas. There's no way. We've also fixed an issue that was causing some players to skip playing most of the contents of maps. On the lower half of the Atlas passive tree, there were a lot of small skills that granted a 2% chance for the map boss to drop an additional map. Okay, they kill this. That it they was kill possible this? to sustain maps by rushing to those bosses and ignoring every other monster in the map. We have retained the overall bonus, but have changed it so the map drops from a random monster within the map rather than the boss. Good, 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 good. It's a good change. We're also addressing an issue with the way that you acquire Maven boss fight invitations. Currently, it's possible that you get hit with a bad streak of RNG and haven't found an invitation by the time you have enough bosses witnessed. Yep. You can now purchase these invitations from Kirak for a moderate price if you need to. Good change. Where is this earth mainly? Because we can just buy it, right? Siege of the Atlas expansion, we hosted a competition that saw players <laughs> racing to be the first to kill Path of Exile's pinnacle bosses in hardcore solo self found mode. It's a, it's the main prize thing. for doing so was the ability to collaborate with us on the design of a unique item that would drop from a boss in Path of Exile's endgame. Five of these uniques have been designed so far and will be featured in this expansion. The oh, sixth nice. one will be released once the winner has time to design it, very likely in 319. Call of the Void is a new cold-themed ring that was designed by Lighty and will drop from the Uber Elder. It causes all damage to chill and causes chilled enemies to shatter on death, as though they were frozen. On top of this, chilled enemies deal less damage back to you based on the magnitude of the chill affecting them. 
Wow. The only is that all incoming damage also chills you. But there are many ways to mitigate this, and in some cases, it's beneficial Can to be chill. that utilize self-chill as part of some crazy combo. That's amazing, this actually. This is useful for a wide variety of different endgame builds. Echoes of Creation is a new unique helmet, also designed by Lighty, which will drop from the Shaper. Cool helmet. It's designed for builds that use Warcrys, and grants an extra use before cooldown to Warcry skills that are socketed in the helmet. It also grants more damage to exerted attacks based on the number cool of Warcrys looking helmet. Holy. Them, but causes you to take damage when you use these attacks. The self-damage number looks really scary, but it can be mitigated by various mechanics such as armor, endurance charges, and life recovery. This powerful niche helmet is ideal for characters that try to use as many war cries as they can. Or is that the like slams her back or what? Introduced is the Burden of Truth, a unique belt which will drop from Cyrus. Broadly speaking, this belt encourages you to have healthy energy shield and life pulse and helps you to okay. achieve this. It's a good hybrid belt. Additional energy shield based on a percentage of What's your supreme maximum decadence? life value. The belt both lets some portion of chaos damage hit your energy shield, but also causes some non-chaos damage to bypass your energy shield like it was chaos damage. We don't know what Supreme this Decadence is. This is upside because splitting damage over both life and energy shield lets you recover both simultaneously. The Supreme Decadence keystone that this belt grants, which is previously restricted to timeless jewels, causes your life flasks to apply to both your life and energy oh, shield at a reduced rate. I see. Overall, this belt is extremely powerful for characters who can build to have a decent That's actually really good. Pool, that is a good belt. Life flasks appropriately. The fourth new item that we're featuring today was created by Waggle. It's an amulet called the Eternal Struggle, which will drop from either the Infinite Hunger or the Black Star. The amulet has a pair of Eldritch mods, and the one that is dominant will be based on which of the bosses dropped it. The dominant mod also controls whether the amulet gives a Malignant Madness or Culling Strike bonus. You'll need to work out which of the two bosses to farm based on which half of the amulet you want to activate. I don't know if I understand that. I need to figure it out. Steel Mage. It's a unique jewel that drops from the Maven. The jewel refers to a random keystone on your passive skill tree and enables you to be able to allocate passives within a radius around that keystone without them being connected to the rest of the tree. Oh While my the god! Itself cannot be allocated, That's amazing. This jewel allows you to jump across great distances on the passive That's a good tree unique. in a very skill point efficient way. In addition to these uniques that have come from the boss kill competition, we have added That's really cool. items to the uber pinnacle boss fights that can be accessed through some of the new keystone passives. These include a different. Can you allocate the keystone as well? They can drop from Uber Cyrus, or just a new around jewel which can drop from the Uber Shaper, and special Forbidden Flame and Forbidden Flesh jewels which can roll exclusive ascendancy notable passives that are not available oh. anywhere else in the game. Those are really. You'll notice that we're gonna have to pause those or see that later. Three months ago. And we're already extending you can, okay. the game even further. This is our plan for every expansion leading up to the release of Path of Exile 2. Cool. Rather than having a much bigger annual expansion, we plan to add as many endgame improvements into each quarterly expansion as we can, alongside its new challenge league, so that there are new challenges to overcome every time you come back to Path of Exile. <laughs> One of the subtle but important aspects of our plan is to keep adding powerful new chase rewards to Path of Exile's endgame, so that there are always new reasons to complete aspirational content. The boss kill competitions oh are great God. because they not only create these rewards, but also immortalize the achievements of some of Path of Exile's best <laughs> players. We're going to run another boss kill competition at the launch of Sentinel. This time, players will have to defeat the uber versions of boss fights that are unlocked by the special keystone passives. We'll post full information in the lead up to release. Yo, thank We're you, try something new with character you six, in this appreciate expansion. It. We're intentionally making no changes to character power. That means no nerfs, no buffs, nothing. Okay. Every single build and build guide made for Siege of the Atlas will work exactly the same in Sentinel. You can start planning your League starter right now, with full confidence about exactly how it's going to play. Cool. However, build exploration Ballist is still totems, required in yeah. 318. Sentinel introduces many difficult challenges, both in the Challenge League itself and in the endgame content. Oh. And you're going to have to work out a plan to create characters that are able to handle this content. But at this release, you can hit the ground running, knowing with confidence which builds are a good start. And running my game. build. <laughs> we don't intend yeah. to this character balance freeze every release. For example, three. That's my build as well. What the fuck? Changes to character balance. Even though what? there are no character balance changes in 318, though, we have still made some changes to actual game content. For example, let's talk about the changes to monster Our build. Magic and rare monsters in Path of Exile get a lot of their power from the <laughs> This is their build disaster. We came up with the majority of the monsters. Uh, that one was on a, a higher fence. 
and only substantially added to them with the introduction of the Nemesis and Bloodlines leagues in 2013 and 2014. These mods are unfortunately showing their age. Many of them are unimpactful and it's quite hard to quickly read their descriptions in the heat of combat. What we need is a new set of mods that are highly impactful in combat, keyworded with one to two colored words that are easy to read at a glance, Monster and fast. producing dangerous combinations. This is exactly what we designed the Arch Nemesis mods to be. Oh, a replacement for the core no. monster mod. <laughs> From 318 onwards, all previous monster mods have been replaced. The green shit Nemesis that mods. follows you. No other part of the Arch Nemesis League has been retained, so there's no more inventory or recipe management. Magic monsters have one Arch Nemesis mod shared across their pack, and rare monsters typically have two mods. However, it's possible to encounter rare monsters with three or even four Arch Nemesis mods on them. Combinations of multiple synergistic mods can create quite interesting situations in combat. For example, if you encounter a monster oh, with a no. Strider and Ice Prism, Not the this. Ice Prism may block you off so that you are more likely to run into the lightning mirages from the Storm Strider. No. We've done a balanced pass over the Arch no. Nemesis mods before making them core. Some have certainly had their power reduced, particularly when applied to magic monsters. We have also changed how monster experience and drops are calculated, so it's now far more about the difficulty of the mods than about the proportional size of the monster. Okay. Various Nemesis and Bloodlines modifiers that were not represented in the Arch Nemesis mod pool have been added in different ways. There you go. It's still a thing. Path of Exile's challenge system has remained the same for the last 21 leagues. For Sentinel, we had a look at whether there were any easy They're gonna make it into a battle pass. It based on what we have learned over the last 100%. six years. Our plan is to retain the model of 40 challenges with rewards that unlock as you progress through them, but with a goal of providing substantially more challenge to endgame players and substantially okay. more rewards to go with it, of course. In order to achieve this, we have crunched down the easier challenges so that the first reward unlocks after only six and the second at 12. I thought to myself, why don't they have a free battle pass as well as the paid one? Because every game does that, right? Respectively. This change gives us a lot more space to ramp up to some incredibly difficult challenges towards the end, which will take a lot of time and skill to complete. Interesting. There are now 10 different rewards you can oh, unlock, which comprise two complete armor sets, each with a pair of oh. rings. But be warned, the challenges you must complete are much, much Wait, harder than any that we have ever set you before. That's pretty We've good. experimenting with support for game controllers on the PC version of Path of Exo. That is During fucking the fantastic. During the we began a beta for controller support. God and damn. And making improvements based on your suggestions and feedback. We're pleased to announce that controller support on PC will officially launch alongside the Sentinel expansion. This also means that Path of Exo is now fully playable on the Steam this Deck is way for those too dang. who are lucky enough to have one so far. The sound? Holy. Alongside finishing controller support for PC, we've also done a push on various small quality of life features in this expansion, well, which we'll reveal over the coming days. An example is that you can now choose whether your hideout. hideout portals can be accessed by one of four options. Everyone, your friends, your guild members, good, or good no change. one. We have also improved how favored maps are selected on the Atlas. Rather than having to click on the map on the Atlas for every slot, nice. you can instead click on if your existing favor maps smart. to quickly copy it to the new slot. Very this smart. This makes it a lot faster to favor many instances of the same map at once. Small change, very good change. There are plenty more small QOL features crammed in the center. Tell me all of them. Over the week leading up to release. Oh, come on. Early in the Arch Nemesis League, we debuted Kerrick's Vault Pass. I didn't like Kerrick's Vault Pass, pass but I'm not against you it. Access to Kerrick's Vault, where you can claim exclusive I didn't buy it, items but as you complete I'm happy that it, people game. can get whatever they want the out of it. The Vault Pass for the Arch Nemesis League is only available for a few more days and will leave the store forever when this league ends. There's no penalty for purchasing the pass late in the league after you've wrapped up your map completion. So if you're pleased with where you got to in Arch Nemesis and want to lock in your unique skins, it's not too late to buy your yeah, pass Yeah, I'm now. sure they made a lot of money with it. Thank you to everyone who I just Eric's hope fault. that this is the slow it together, transition to, to not having loot boxes and interact with gameplay in a visual way. The purchases directly fund development of both Path of Exile 1 and 2. Just take away loot boxes. Vault pass will launch alongside the Sentinel League. Like the previous one, there are eight exclusive unique item skins that can be unlocked as you complete map bonus objectives. Was that Araka uh, Was that Arakali? Full details on these new rewards closer to launch. That was Arakali. To buy either the Arch Nemesis Pass now, before it leaves the store forever, or the Sentinel one when the expansion launches, go to pathofexile.com slash vault. Wait, there's actually no new skills. Stream, we're launching two new series of You're actually packs, right. The Arcanist and Reaper packs. Each tier contains the pack's full face value and points, plus several exclusive microtransactions. 
These packs are only available during the Sentinel League and will leave the store forever in three months. Every microtransaction you are about to see is entirely cosmetic and does not affect your character's I wanted to start a new... Uh... The Arcanist pack series contains seven exclusive microtransactions. The Cloak of Elements indicates the power of your fire, cold, and lightning resistances on your back. Interesting. When a resistance is capped, the effect is extra strong. Cool. While wearing the Ring of the Black Star, your level up effect looks like this. Okay, relax. In the Timekeeper's hideout, you can use the Chronosphere <laughs> to change the time of day from dawn to noon to oh, dusk that's, to night. That's really cool as well. This is some creative MTXs. This is a new hideout as well, by the way. I like that. With Chevron's tome on your belt, identifying items will cause exploding books to appear nearby. <laughs> The these mage these are really cool. Blossoms with greater intensity as you open higher tier maps. It's so weird, but it's still cool. Yo, what's up with Nightbot, dude? With the soul stunning weapon effect attached to your weapon, any attacks that stun will cause your enemies to have an out of body experience. <laughs> People trip. Drinking from the searing Quicksilver flask causes an explosion and sets your character on fire. Cool. I like these MTXs, they're really good. The Reaper Pack series also has seven exclusive cosmetic microtransactions. The Soul Harvester's Cloak's power is based on the number Sick. of enemies your character has killed. Very edgy, very cool. With the Belt of the Hive Queen equipped, flasks you use will cause blood-sucking insects to appear all over your character. Oh. The Ghostlit Graveyard is a hideout where you can control the color of its torches. It also comes with six exclusive hideout decorations. Medidrone will follow you around and use a healing beam on you whenever you're gaining life. Thanks, Medidrone. <laughs> Thanks, Medidrone. The underworld portal opens a gateway to hell. Its effect upgrades in part two and again to in maps, to where, where it indicates what tier of map you're playing. Holy. While wearing the Ring of the Exorcist, any spells you cast will exorcise the ghosts of your enemies if you crit. Really While cool. using the Grim Reaper apparition, the Reaper will appear and cull any unique or rare enemies you slay. <laughs> As I mentioned before, these packs are exclusive <laughs> okay. to the Sentinel League and will leave the store in three months. They're available right now at pathofexile.com slash purchase, and they directly fund the ongoing development of Path of Exile 2 and Path of Exile 1 expansions like Sentinel. Oh, no, these are the support packs. Support. 